Today let's automate your virtual lab environment. So no matter if you want to develop software, if you do a technical research or study for your IT certifications, you often need to create new virtual machines and install a new operating system on that and then provision them with all the software and tools you're going to need on these machines. And I lately did a video about how to automate the process of creating those machines and install the operating system with Vagrant. And I lately did a second video about how to automate all your Linux servers with Ansible. So in this video we are combining those two amazing softwares together and what we will get is a fully automated virtual lab environment. We will start with creating those virtual machines, install the operating system and later provision them with all the software and tools you're going to need on these machines. And this can be just done in one simple command and these machines are up and running in just one or two minutes. So if that sounds amazing to you, keep watching. Hi everybody, my name is Christian and I always make great tutorials and content for IT professionals. I also stream every Wednesday, Thursday and sometimes Monday on Twitch. So if you have any questions, don't miss that. In this video we will automate our virtual lab environment with Vagrant and Ansible. And I lately did two videos about those two amazing softwares. And I just showed you the fundamentals, so if you haven't checked out these videos, don't forget to do that after this video. So I mainly focus on Linux machines there, but of course you can also use Ansible to provision Windows servers with that. So this is also pretty amazing. And what we're going to do in this video is, we are going to combine those two softwares. So we will create a Vagrant file that will automatically create a virtual machine or you can even provision multiple virtual machines with that software and this Vagrant file will automatically execute an Ansible playbook so that Ansible playbook is responsible for the provision process of those virtual machines so you can install software on that you can adjust any settings on that create users adjust network settings or basically whatever you need there is an Ansible module for that and you can easily integrate this in your virtual environment and use that to just quickly create new virtual machines and provision a fully virtual test environment for developing stuff or doing technical research. So if you are wondering how you can integrate Ansible with Vagrant, so this is pretty easy. But one thing that is important here, Ansible and Vagrant need to run on the same machine where you execute those commands. And all Windows users now will have a problem, just like me because I also use Windows. And it doesn't happen really often when you cannot run a software on Windows but you can on Linux. Well, with Ansible this exactly is the case because Ansible just runs on Linux. So if we want to do that we will need to install Vagrant and Ansible on a Linux machine and use that to provision our hypervisor running on our Windows 10 machine. And I lately did a research and do, did some testing how I could solve this problem and I found a pretty easy solution to do that and this is with Windows Subsystem for Linux. So Windows Subsystem for Linux is actually just a virtual Linux machine that is running inside your Windows 10 operating system and this is pretty amazing and one of my favorite open source projects of Microsoft. So I'm not going through the complete install process of a Windows Subsystem for Linux, you can just research that it is not very difficult but I probably will also make a video about this in the future if I'm not too lazy. So don't forget to subscribe to this channel once this video will come online so you don't miss that. So the trick here is that Vagrant needs to be installed on your Windows 10 machine and on Windows Subsystem for Linux in exactly the same version. So note that Vagrant says that this is still a beta version, but I personally I didn't run into any issues. It's working fine for some weeks. I've tested this so far, so you, I think you can just use that. And then we will install Ansible on that Windows subsystem for Linux. So this is pretty straightforward, not really too complicated, but I will guide you through the complete process of the installation. So what you need to do, because you need to adjust a few settings in your Windows subsystem for Linux so that Vagrant is able to communicate from inside the virtual machine with a hypervisor on your host operating system. So let's step right into that. So first we need to download Vagrant from the Vagrant homepage. And don't worry, I've put you all the links in the description below. You can also have a look at my written blog article there. You can also copy all the commands and templates I'm using in this tutorial. So when you go to this link here, you will find all the releases of Vagrant. So at the time of recording this video, that currently is this version here, the 2.2.10, just click on this version and you can find some different packages that you can install on your system. 
So depending on what is your Linux distribution in your Windows subsystem for Linux, you need to use the Debian package for Debian or Ubuntu. And you can also find an RPM image for CentOS or whatever is using RPM. <laughs> and you can also find a DMG image for macOS. But yeah, I, I didn't test that on macOS yet because I don't have a Mac. But yeah, don't worry about this. So in this case, we will need to download this image here. So I will just copy this link here and go to my Windows subsystem for Linux. And now I will just download this. You can easily do this with a wget. So this will just download uh, the link. We will just paste here. Just hit enter and it's now downloading the Debian image. To install the Debian image on our Ubuntu Windows subsystem for Linux, you just enter sudo apt install and then the vagrant image file. So hit enter, it will ask you for a password of course, and then it will be automatically installed on your machine. We now need to add a few things in order to make Vagrant be able to communicate with the host operating system. And these are some environment variables we need to set. So if you are running ZSH, just like me, so you have this nice uh, fancy design here in your Windows subsystem for Linux, you need to place those environment variables in your .zshrc file. If you are not having ZSH and you are running default bash, you usually put them into the .bash rc file. So in my case I'm running zsh so I will open my favorite text editor that is vim in this case and then zshrc file and then you can see I have all my settings here my all my zsh and my theme for zsh here and I just add some new lines at the end of this file. So start with export and then enter vagrant wsl windows access. So this is a pretty long string here. And this need to point to your personal home folder on your Windows machine, but from inside your Windows subsystem for Linux. So that depends on where is your profile folder located. Just enter the path of your profile folder from within your Windows subsystem for Linux. So the next is export vagrant WSL enable Windows access equal one. So that is pretty important because this enables Windows subsystem for Linux to communicate with the hypervisor on your Windows 10 operating system. And if you are running VirtualBox, you are now fine because the default provider is always VirtualBox. But if you are running Hyper-V, just like me, you need to add another variable or it is just recommended to do that because then you don't need to switch your provider all the time. So you can just define the default provider to Hyper-V and you don't need to specify that in your Vagrant file anymore. So let's just write and exit this file. So now you can log off and log in again to reload your settings. You could also execute source and then zshrc file. So this should reload the settings and the environment variables. So let's check if the environment variables are correctly loaded and just uh, enter print env. And you can see there are our environment variables here. So if this is working now, Vagrant should be now able to connect to the Windows 10 hypervisor. So if you want to check that also just enter Vagrant. If you see an error like this here, you probably don't have installed Vagrant on your Windows host operating system. So let's go back and do that. So just download the MSI package and start it. Just click on next and install Vagrant here. Install the software and that is everything. Just wait until the installation is complete. You need to restart your computer. If you have everything installed correctly, you should be able to run the Vagrant command from within your Windows subsystem for Linux. You can check it when you execute this command and everything is working fine. If you get an error here, make sure you have done all the settings like adding those environment variables and installing Vagrant on your Windows subsystem for Linux and your Windows 10 machine in exactly the same version. Now we need to install Ansible. So in Ubuntu 20.04 LTS, this is pretty straightforward. Just enter sudo apt install Ansible and it gets installed. So now we can start to create our virtual machines and we will start with a Vagrant file that will define all the settings Vagrant should use to create the virtual machines. We will also define the Ansible playbook that will be executed by Vagrant later after the machine is installed. And you can of course use whatever you want, but I have also prepared you a few templates. So if you just want to see some examples and copy those templates, have a look at my GitHub homepage and there I will link you a repository that is called Vagrant 
boiler plates. So you can use those boiler plates and customize them to whatever your need is. And you can use them simply as examples how you can create virtual machines with Vagrant and what different playbooks you can use to provision those machines. So in this video I will show you a quick example. So I will create an Ubuntu 20.04 LTS machine and I will provision that automatically with Docker. So you don't need to install Docker after you have created this virtual machine. So Vagrant and Ansible will do that all for you. So that sounds amazing. Let's start with that. So let's go to my Vagrant project folder where I have prepared some test files I'm going to show you. So the folder is called Ubuntu Cluster and when I execute an ls command you can see there are two files in here. The first one is a Vagrant file which has all the configuration settings for Vagrant to create the virtual machine. And the master playbook is an Ansible playbook that will install Docker later on this machine. So let's have a look at both of these files in Visual Studio Code. So this is a Vagrant file how I added this to provision one Ubuntu server machine. So we will start with the configuration and do some configuration settings and we will start with a VM define master do subconfig. So this is a bit special. I haven't showed you this in my Vagrant tutorial video. By the way, if you're not familiar with this, please check out my Vagrant video there. I will explain you all the fundamentals. So with this sub configuration, you can define multiple virtual machines and you can give them a name. So in this case, I define this virtual machine as master device and then I do a sub configuration. So in this sub configuration, all the settings that should apply to this virtual machine here are defined. So we will start with a box image that is set to generic Ubuntu 20.04 LTS. So this is an image I use pretty often. It's working very well on my Hyper-V. So you can also use that to provision a new Ubuntu 20.04 LTS server. Then we will set the VM hostname. So this is a hostname that is used inside the Linux machine. And we will also select the provider to Hyper-V. So if you have set the environment variable to set your default provider, you probably can just comment out this line here so you, so you don't really need that. And then we will automatically connect the virtual machine to a network. So in my previous tutorial, I always had to select this network manually at the time when the virtual machine was created. But um, I found out when you add this comma bridge here, you can specify the name of the virtual switch and you don't need to enter this manually all the time. And note that if you're running Hyper-V, Vagrant has a lot of limitations in terms of networking. So you cannot actually define any IP addresses there because Vagrant usually doesn't have the permissions to make changes to the virtual machines and the virtual switch on the Hyper-V stack. So you have a few limitations there, but what you can do is you can select a bridge interface so that the virtual machine is automatically attached to that virtual switch here. Then we have some provider specific configurations and I've pointed out in my last video about Vagrant that this is pretty important to improve the performance when running this on a Hyper-V. So you should always disable this linked clone and I also needed to disable the enable virtualization extension. So this is because I'm running with an AMD processor and an AMD processor is not capable of nested virtualization. So usually this virtualization extensions will enable nested virtualization on the VM and that will break uh, in my case because I'm using that AMD processor. So if you're running an, with an Intel processor you can just enable this but with AMD you shouldn't do that. And then we execute an Ansible playbook. So we can just create a new sub configuration for Ansible. And you can also set this to verbose is equal V. So you can of course leave that out. But if you use that, you will actually see what Ansible is executing inside the virtual machine. And then you simply define the name or the location of the playbook you want to execute. So if you want to add another virtual machine to this configuration, you simply can just copy this part here and change the names from master to auxiliary or whatever you want to use. And of course you can also execute a different Ansible playbook on the auxiliary machine. So for instance, you can provision this with Ubuntu, the auxiliary machine you can also provision with a different box image or with different software installed. So we will define all that, what it's installed and provisioned in this playbook here. So let's also have a look at the master playbook that is executed later when the machine is created. 
So we will start with the hosts all. So I actually don't know if this is really necessary, but I've just uh, left that in. And then we need to add the become yes. So the become yes is pretty important because we need root users privileges to execute all the different tasks below. And then we start with defining our tasks. And the first task is install the prerequisites. So what I've done is I basically just translated the documentation how to install Docker and translated this into a simple Ansible playbook. So for instance, you can see the first step here is to do an update and install some prerequisite packages like these five things here, then add an official Docker GPG key and do some other stuff here. And what I've done, I've basically just translated this to an Ansible playbook. So you can see in the first task, we will install the prerequisites here. So we will install those five packages packages here and the next task is to add an apt key so this is also needed and then we add the docker repository so you can use the modules apt key and apt underscore repository to add this new repository to your virtual machine and then we will need to install the free packages docker ce docker ce cli and the container d and what is important here is the update cache yes because if you have just added a new repository you need to do a sudo apt update and this is basically what this update cache statement here is doing so after adding this repository it will reload those package sources and then you are able to install those free packages Packages. And the last task is add user permissions. So you don't need to do that to install Docker, but I've done this because Vagrant always installs a user that is called Vagrant and I've just added this user to the Docker group. So when you enter the SSH with the Vagrant user, you can then simply execute Docker commands without sudo or root users privileges. So let's test if this is working. So let's go back to our Windows subsystem for Linux and to start the creation process of the virtual machine, simply just enter Vagrant up. So this will automatically search for a Vagrant file in this home folder and then you will start to provision this virtual machine. Okay, let's wait until this is finished. This usually shouldn't take too long. On my machine, it usually takes just one or two minutes approximately. So you can see it automatically attaches this virtual machine to my virtual switch. So this is basically just a bridge to my physical network and it gets an IP address of my DHCP server, which is basically my firewall. Now it provisions or runs the provisioner Ansible. And you can see it now execute this Ansible playbook. It's gathering the facts, install the prerequisites tasks. So that will actually install those five packages. Then it adds the repository key and adds the repository. And after that, it will automatically update the sources and install the Docker packages. And if everything is successful, you should see something like this here. So you can see every task was successful. We have done five changes on the machine. And now we can simply test if we are able to run Docker from within the virtual machine. Just enter Vagrant SSH and this will automatically connect to the virtual machine. So that sometimes takes some time because Vagrant needs to do the authentication with private and public keys. And now we are logged into our master machine. If we now execute the docker version command, we should be able to see the docker version and you can see docker is installed. You can also see docker run hello world will usually work. So of course we didn't use that image before, it pulls that from the docker hub and runs it. So this is basically just a quick example, but just think of how you could use that. So I think this is pretty amazing because you can create multiple virtual machines, provision them with an operating system. You can use Ubuntu, CentOS or whatever you want. You can also provision Windows servers with that because Vagrant and Ansible are both capable of managing and provisioning Windows servers. So that is pretty amazing. You can install and set up a fully virtual test environment in just a few minutes with some examples. And if you want to get more more examples how you can install different software and adjust settings. You can just have a look at my GitHub page and I've also created an Ansible boilerplate so you can copy and paste some examples. You can execute them on your virtual machine. So for instance, if you want to deploy a virtual machine with Docker or with a simple web server with Nginx or a database server, you can just use my examples to do that. Or if you want to deploy a Kubernetes cluster, you probably can just do that with Ansible and Vagrant. I've 
have not finished the examples for that, but if you follow me on GitHub, you probably will see when I update those repositories. I will also do more videos about that and also about Kubernetes and how to make automation stuff, how to do scripting and deploying those things. So if this is interesting to you, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. So I hope you liked the short video and this was helpful to you guys. So if you want to learn more, please don't forget to leave me a comment if you want to see more about Ansible or Vagrant or Kubernetes or whatever you want to see. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button so I know this is valuable to you. Also a quick reminder, I stream every Wednesday, Thursday and sometimes Monday on Twitch. You could also join our Discord community if you just want to connect with people who share the same interests like you. So before I go, I want to thank all my supporters on Patreon and especially Mason who is the producer of this show. So without you, the community, this whole project wouldn't be possible at all. So thanks everybody for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day. Take care of yourself and I see you soon.